Trav, you said all collectathons are bad. Uh, we're going to talk about that. You definitely said that. I'm not putting you on the spot. Here on this episode of the Crubcast, my name is Kevin. I'm here with Trav. Hi, Trav. Hey. I'm here with Wolf K.O. Son. Sean. That's me. And Hi. I'm here with world famous Twitch streamer J Tart9. Hi, Justin. How's it going, everybody? So, Trav, uh, why do you think all collectathon games are bad? It says so on the script. That's true. Oh, no, we, do have, um, we do have scripts. I think, I think, hold on, let me shuffle papers, sound effect. Oh, these are my taxes. Wow. <laughs> I think there's never been a collectathon that has been. Elaborate for me, please. Uh, Justin. Uh, I'll go first with Justin JTAR9, world famous streamer. <laughs> Justin, why has there been a collectathon? Why has there been a collectathon? Um, well, they're usually games where you collect a lot of things that are left around the map. And uh, the way you collect them can differ from game to game. Um, but such as have not seen <laughs> such as <laughs> Mario <laughs> and uh Spyro <laughs> Crash Tam This is the this Bandicoot. these are the differences in how to collect things. You can Mario, you can Spyro. Great. You can smash Banuka. <laughs> All right, Sean, what is your opinion of that definition of collectathons? It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. I think it covers everything, uh including the color blue. So, good job. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, okay, so I have a question. Do you consider seven. Zelda a collectathon? Because you collect a yeah. lot of things. No. You collect no. bees. That's just an adventure no. game. Like, you can collect no, things. No, no, and but not you collect a... pieces of the Triforce. In one of them. Well, two of them. Wait, is this our yeah. argument? You collect things, therefore Wait. collectathon? Yeah, that's. I'm uh, breaking yeah. character for this is, bit. Is Pokemon a collectathon? <laughs> no. Yes. You co- no. You're collecting it's them all. Pokemon you're collecting oh, them What is that? <laughs> you're collecting badges. Oh my god. You're gosh. collecting the Pokemon. That we've gone off the rails in Crub history. It's called We're Gotta Catch Them All, in. not Gotta Collect Them All. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, yeah. Depending on what game you're playing, it's Gotta Collect Them All. Mm. You don't collect Pokemon, you catch them. Yeah, they're so to be like a... He's not Ash Collectum, you idiot. <laughs> you stupid moron idiot. <laughs> he do be collecting, though. Not he really. He do be collecting. Like 40 Except he keeps giving them away. He, he keeps has, like, giving them away. Yeah, he gives yeah. away all of his tor- tori, his toroses. Uh, I'm going to throw the, the Patreon plug a... out. If you are a subscriber, either on Twitch or YouTube or Patreon, JTart9, Chris, and I are doing uh, a full watch along of every episode of the Pokemon anime. So I'm going to get that plug in early because I don't know where else this episode is going. So, it's topical. Uh, hit the, hit topical. the like button if you enjoy what we've done so far with the, with the place. <laughs> please. Yes, yeah. please do. But also, I, I need to throw this out there real quick. Ash doesn't do that out of the kindness of his heart. It's a tax write off. Okay. He, he is Ooh. rich. It's a tax write off. He's not He's doing not it because rich. he cares about them. I feel like like he's oh. a dependent i feel like if he had money he'd buy a bike his mom yeah. claims him on her yeah. taxes yeah and she claims those you, as tax write-offs do you think she do yes. you think she files single or married with mr mime single gets more money because mr mime he got that hand on that thigh that mm-hmm. doesn't mean anything you don't got mm-hmm. a ring mr M- mr mime does not show us, me a ring so he doesn't provide for the family he does not he just he provides cooks. the size so yeah but co- who gets the food I think he yeah. also shops in the. No, what are we, no, no. What no. are we who talking has the about? Money? Who has uh, the money? Yeah. So, we're going to talk about collectathons here today on the Crubcast. Uh, what because the piss is Trav himself has said that there is no such thing as a good collectathon. I'm going to keep putting those words in his mouth. He definitely said mm-hmm. that. He did. Uh, I definitely did. Let's talk he about our stop. earliest experiences with collectathons. Trav, what's yours? <laughs> oh, man. Probably playing Mario Sunshine on my sister's GameCube at a very young age. I had no idea what I was doing. I knew Mario from 2D, walk left to right, but I mean, I keep walking right in Mario Sunshine, I just go in circles. So that blew my mind. True. Um, and then, like, I accidentally loaded into her uh, save data, so I had the rocket nozzle, and that was cool. And then, you know, I grow up later, eventually play Mario Sunshine properly. I still love it. Fight me. Um, and then, okay. uh, let's see. I want to say I eventually played Spyro... And then it was all downhill from there. <laughs> Gosh. Is that because of Spyro, or is that just... Yeah. There's probably a, a factor probably blame there. Spyro? Yeah. Okay. There's probably oh, a direct yeah. correlation from Spyro yeah, to the downward, yeah. the downward trajectory of Trav's 100%. life. 
One hundred percent, I believe it. Uh, I'll I'll take that and I'll jump in and say that I started playing collectathons with Mario sixty four before I knew how to speak. I was playing that game at like age one, like actually. Mm. Uh, so mm. I I grew up with that, and thankfully also grew up with two D games. So I I never lost that that skill that that mm. some kids genuinely did just lose. Uh, so. I remember like beating Mario 64 probably when I was like four. It took a while, obviously. Mm. Um, and I remember that and, and Ocarina of Time being games where it's like, you know, when you're just learning how to read and, you know, like a couple words. Yeah. I remember that like those games helped with that because I was like still playing them at that point. Uh, mm. To which I'll Makes say uh, Ocarina of Time is not a collectathon, Justin. You're just wrong. It is not. It could wrong. be. It, Incorrect. It's, it's, you, you barely platform. There's no jump button. Yeah. Does, it, does, does being a collectathon mean that you're a platformer? Yes. Yeah, it's a collectathon platformer. Oh, hold on, hold on. Actually, we wait, can hold dissect on. this. No, 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 Spyro, we can talk about this. Spyro's not a platformer. Spyro's an auto runner. So, like, what? you just go. <laughs> is what is happening? Happening? He's not thon. wrong. It's a flight sim. Did you know <laughs> that you can play Spyro with the analog, uh, the flight stick that the PS1 what has? Is... I found Ooh, that out that's sick, recently. actually. Uh, not only can you play it, it has a different controller set. So someone at Insomniac built a second set of controls oh. in for Spyro 1. And they wanted one, to play the game like that. And 2 and 3. Oh. So you can play it with flight sticks. Oh. They're, they're like $80, That's so I didn't buy one. Cool. I didn't buy one to test it out yet, but I want to. I was like, Good. one day I'm going to blow money on that first $80 dream. today? Yeah, that might like, be the it, move. That might be the move at the convention we're going to. Too many games. To try oh, and find, find a flight the, stick find to play the Spyro with. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, I could find one on eBay for ninety bucks. Yeah, it's not bad. Should. Actually, for PS One stuff, it has two sticks. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I like the idea of you finding one on eBay while we're at a convention. That dude, these are things. grungy as hell, dude. Don't these they look, look sick? disgusting. Yeah, they're all like gross. Yeah, I need twelve. Buy six. <laughs> Start so, with six, and then you can move your way up. So yeah. I also did play Spyro 1 a little bit as a kid. I've talked about this before. I mm. Oh, thank you, Trav, for putting that on screen. That makes it a lot easier for Chris when he edits this. Oh, gosh. Hi, Chris. Uh, I, I played Spyro as a kid as well. It was like at my dad's mm. house, but we didn't have a PS1 memory card. So I oh, would so play the first few levels first over and over again. And so I never really got into Spyro for that reason. Uh, by that point, I was a PS2 kid. So, makes sense. Yeah. Sean, what about you? What's your experience with Collectathon platformers? Uh, I love them. I am a slut for 3D platformers, but I think my first actual, you know, realizing what a collectathon is and going for it would be the Donkey Kong Country series. Uh, the first game, like, kind of taught me what it was, but it was really Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest that really showed me what collectathons could be because it's, it kind of showed that, oh, hey, I could actually go after all these like little secrets and stuff. Like I see like there's a coin all the way up there. How the piss do I get up to it? And in doing so, it kind of showed you, not showed you, but like teased you in a way to like try to figure things out on your own, mm -hmm. uh, try to master the controls and really just the, the reward was always like just being able to do it. Like it was gratifying to make that leap, to make those like precise jumps on enemies or figure out where like the hidden place was and that's whatever like i think video games fully clicked with me because i was like oh that was fun i need more of this and now i play video games more than uh anyone should that's valid justin debatable what's your experience Debat with collectathons and platformers specifically oh uh, man um so I'm really bad at collectathons because I never finish games. Um, that's true. That's one of my yeah. personality traits is that people yell at me for not finishing games. Took this man. Um, I know we've said it before. It took this man nine months to finish Sayonara Wild Hearts, a game that's an yeah, hour yeah, long. Yeah. Hour long. Yeah. I, I stopped halfway through and I was like, I get it. And then I just stopped. <laughs> and, and then I get and then, it. And then, I get and then it. Chris asked, then Chris asked, hey, how did you enjoy it? And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't finish it. And he was like, what? Um... Which Sayonara Wild Hearts could be a collectathon. Um, no. Games <laughs> challenges are not collectathons. We're not doing this. No, no, I'm collecting no, no, no. achievements, but you're co bro. B but what? you're collecting no. the little hearts in the wild. I, Sayonara. That, <laughs> I think Breath of the Wild is a collectathon. I, I honestly could be. Um, no, my, my favorite collectathons are Banjo Kazooie and Mario Odyssey. Um, Mario Odyssey <laughs> is the follow up to Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything different. Like 
If you want to play Banjo Tooie, you just play Mario Odyssey. What? Um No. Yes. They're not um, the same. Exactly the same. And No, they're not. Yeah. Yes, they are. I How? played them both. Sh- tell me tell wide me wide open wide open worlds with little challenges in them, no real direction once you're in. It's just a big sandbox it's, where you're collecting things. It's just the transformation part, Sean. That's that's yeah. all he's talking about. It's like the Mario and, turns into things in each level. Yeah. Like like they both that's turn it. into frogs. <sighs> Scream. <laughs> so now that we've explained our our some of our very earliest history with collectathons, obviously these aren't uh, comprehensive. You know, we've all played a lot more than than just those three games each. But yeah. let's talk about what makes a good collectathon, because mm-hmm. that's a question that's really hard to answer and really easy to answer wrong, or rather, really easy to get wrong. I would say not answer. Yeah, wrong. Like well, right you know, now, you can answer it then... wrong because Justin thinks that Zelda's a collectathon. So. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think it was. I think be. Justin is the one who said there's no collectathon. Yeah, yeah, honestly, I mean, no good collectathon. I did but it again. His name, his name's not as useful for SEO though. So. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, that's, so that's trash. Fair. Stop saying that. I'm, um, tra- I'm sorry. My my main thing with a collectathon is mm. it needs to be rewarding enough to continue collecting the things that are in the game. You're not just doing it to do it. Mm-hmm. And also, if there's too many. Then it gets just draining. well. It's it's interesting because Odyssey is the is probably the the perfect litmus test for how much is too much in a collectathon, because mm-hmm. there's so many you know literally 999 technically micro challenges in that game that you can find and pursue, and you're getting that little dopamine hit every single time you get one for the most menial of tasks sometimes, mm-hmm. and. I almost wonder in the same way as like a DK64 if that's the sort of thing where it becomes too much because you're getting too many rewards and they don't right. mean as much because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Because like you still feel good when you get the triple moon in mm-hmm. Mario Odyssey where you get three moons at once. Yeah. It still mm-hmm. feels really, really good. Maybe that's it's because rare. you did a very good job of making it like zoom in and have a cool animation when you collect it kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Also, just the finale of Mario Odyssey is really what you're going to in the finale in that game is fantastic. Um, then they repopulate so it you after you're done with the game. what you have to collect just to reach the end? Or do you collect it for the name of the game? The Depends on the game. game. The love of the game. Yeah. Depends on the game, honestly. Makes sense. Because, like, you could say that something like a um, like a Breath of the Wild where you're running around and collecting things not a collecting. You're you're doing you're not doing the collecting there to get to the end of the game because that's not particularly how you get to the end of the game. You okay. go and do the challenges. Like you're not going and collecting all of the pieces of um the soul so you can upgrade your health and stuff like that specifically mm-hmm. to beat the game because you can beat the game whenever you want. Right. Um I'll I'll you're jump doing in, it because it's I, fun to. I'll jump in and throw on to the the Odyssey train that part of why I loved Odyssey so much is because you know all of those early Switch games are designed in such a way specifically to have those micro challenges. Breath of the Wild's uh, design philosophy, given coincidentally because it was a Wii U game, was yeah. about you know being able to make progress in small bursts. That's what Odyssey is. You can get five stars while on the train. You know. Yeah. I was always most excited about Mario Odyssey two because. Yeah. I, I've never finished Galaxy 2, just because I always play it after Galaxy 1, so mm. I always get burned oh out. Oh my god, I did... Sorry, didn't mean to no, cut no, you off. Good. I did the same thing. Yeah. And I I really love what Galaxy 2 does as far as platforming challenges, because Mario Galaxy 1 doesn't really have many platforming challenges. It's very it's very much a like a style over substance kind of game. Like, it's about the, uh, the immersion. Yeah. It's about... Not the immersion, necessarily, but... You know what I mean? It's about it's about that feeling yeah. of of being a, a unique platformer rather than necessarily being one. Yeah, yeah weird, weirdly having like a like a pretty deep story for a Mario game. Th- that as well. Like, that as well. And Odyssey was that way for me in that there weren't really many platforming challenges. It was all just about like banjo esque discovery, which is mm-hmm. where I do agree that it's kind of a banjo game because it's banjo is never really about the platforming. It's about the individual adventure. Adventure, the individual characters you meet, the, the things you turn into, uh, yeah. and the, the twists on the formula, which Mario doesn't tend to do outside of mm-hmm. Odyssey. And right. so I really wanted an Odyssey 2 to have more platforming, and we just obviously haven't gotten that yet, and I'm sad. Yeah. 
it will probably be a Switch Two launch title if I was if I was a betting. It might man. have a different name too, though. At this point, though. yeah. But like yeah. The, the 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 movement of Mario in Mario Odyssey was so well tuned mm-hmm. that I wanted a way to play that game without needing to use the motion controls. Yeah, and and that's something I think that's really important when it comes to collectathons is like the movement of your character because I remember whenever they made Super Mario sixty four, they spent like months figuring out how to make Mario move and make him feel good to move because. Like, you do you really want to control a character that's not fun to run around in 3D space? No, the piss you don't. So they spent like forever like learning how to make them leap one way or the other, whatnot. We have fingers up. I'm throwing up my ones for for Croc. Mm. Oh, they don't exist. Because you said um, they spent months tuning Mario, and I'm just like, they saw Croc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did. But, um,. But, like, for me, when it comes to, like, collective thons and making them, like, actually, you know, really fun and not bloated or, like, too, like, overwhelming is to give enough options where you can decide what you want to go do. Still advance, and then if you want to come back, you can. But, like, you're you're not necessarily backtracking because you have to, but, like, you can advance with what you have, see what the next world's like, and then learn the game a little more. Maybe come back if you want to. But the key is, I think, for me, is to have, like, enough variety where, like, you're not just stuck right then and there. You come in, and you only have three things you can do, and you have to leave, come back, or whatever. If you have a variety, I think that is encouraging to players who may not want to collect every single thing. Because, let's face it, even though these are collect-a-thons, not everybody does 100% these games. Most people don't. Yeah, so you I'll, have to make the collectathon enjoyable for those people as well, because like you said, most people don't. I'll I'll bounce off of that, and because we're talking about Odyssey a lot, let's talk about the other Banjo three briefly. Uh, ukulele. ukulele. I think that game has pretty okay movement. It just doesn't mm-hmm. have good level design or really anything else. Yep, and that's where it's, that game really falls apart. Is like the, yeah. the the biggest sin for me is one of the things about collectathons is there's usually multiple types of uh, collectibles per level. You know, there's your mm-hmm. coins, or in this case, you know, there's there's the the notes the from Banjo Kazooie. There's quills yeah. in, in the case of ukulele, and then there's you know the the star, the power star, whatever it might be. Right. And in every game, the coin is used as a direction it's used as a guide to the player to say hey there's something here and it's Mm, one of the things about mario odyssey and how it was designed was people would like break the game you know during like focus tests and they would just say oh we should put a moon there because Mm. we'll reward you for going somewhere you didn't think you could because prior games would just put coins in those spots yeah and in ukulele the quills are themselves often hidden away like they, they're not used as like yeah. a line to say oh you can go here you can go yeah go right they're just placed on top of random unity rocks yeah which is something that like i really appreciate uh a lot of like the older games doing like they used to like you know for example you bring up a ukulele and like the notes would actually show you okay you go over here and now you can see like a jiggy like off to the side whereas in ukulele it's like all right let me check behind this three yeah. bladed grass and see if there's anything here Nope. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, it's behind that one that I've walked by seven times, but I can't tell the difference because they all look alike. And even Banjo, like Banjo Tui, I don't think is really a collectathon. I think that's an adventure game because mm-hmm. they specifically yeah. make notes less common, partly because yeah. of, you know, engine issues. They just couldn't keep the game running at a frame rate that was acceptable. But mm-hmm. the focus is more on the individual uh, interactions with characters to get you to the notes, which is almost yeah. a quest in its own right rather than uh, a reward. But yeah. Trav, have you played ukulele and why? No. Good. Uh, but, but why? <laughs> um, I got it from a humble bundle on Steam. Let me think. Mm-hmm. I think I yeah, I have it in my Steam library. Never should, played it. You should you load should it on right your now. Steam Deck and play it. play it. Don't do that. I promise it's not. Okay. Don't know. actually do it. Yeah. Don't Although, do it. Gosh, no. Uh, but um, I was, but speaking of ukulele, uh, ukulele and possible where I think they actually went figured yes. out like okay what they were aiming for, and said hey you know we've done the Donkey Kong Country games, these are our characters let's just hone in on what we know we're good at and just actually make a good collectathon here that th- I think the biggest thing for me which I really like the way they did this is you had to collect bees um, to really 
give yourself lives for the impossible layer. Like that is that is how you can beat the game by giving yourself like those there, lives. There's a and final I, challenge for those that aren't uh, familiar. There's a final mission that is. Oh yeah. You can do it at any time in the same way that you can fight, you know, the final boss in Zelda Breath of the Wild at, at any time. Right. But it's impossible. Wow. Like, it's like, it's you know, an hour long. Difficult. And you have a set number of lives that you get based on the amount of power stars you've collected, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, and the more you collect, the more lives you have. So the more mess ups you can have. And it's not like one of those like, oh, you get to like a certain checkpoint. No, there are no checkpoints. You just see the flag of the last place, like the farthest place you've died. That's yeah, your it flag. That's an interesting way of going about it. Because one thing I've always struggled with collectathons is when do you when do, when does as you as a game designer making a collectathon decide when it's okay that you've collected enough? And the way question. the impossible layer does it is very interesting because the answer is you've collected enough when you have enough to beat the game. Yeah, yeah. It's I I really like impossible layer and uh, I love how it handled all of ukulele's issues. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the issues with ukulele is an issue with a lot of collectathons, which is world design, and not just not just the you know the quills and the the coins that you find as guides, but the actual functional design of the levels in ukulele was already too wide open before you expand levels, and yeah. you can expand them once you have the prerequisite amount of of uh, jiggies, essentially of pages. Yeah, uh, and once you can once you do that, the world expands and. It just gets even bigger and you don't know which parts you've been to because they just kind of plop more assets into some sections you already thought you did. So yeah. some areas that seem like you could do them are locked off until you do that. And I, I it retroactively, retrospectively, I should say, I looked mm-hmm. at that game and realized from something like Impossible Lair that it would have been better in that game's case if, for example, you had to do all five levels and then you were able to say, OK, we've expanded them all. So now you have to go back rather than say, I'm a collectathon player. Mm. I want to do everything in one run for the first level. Because then by the time right. you get to level three, you're going to want to die because that game is just yeah. too much. And yeah. what Impossible Lair does is it gives you almost like Mario 64 Wet Dry World, where you can jump into the painting and that determines the height of the water at the start of the level. Mm. Uh, there are a, there are certain levels that have modifiers. So some have like uh, honey, and that means that you can like wall slide and wall jump where you couldn't before. Some levels become like speed challenges if you turn on the fan in the overworld to affect the level. There are other examples that I can't think of with Impossible Air that do uh, other, you know, varieties of things. There are some that are underwater levels if you yeah. flood the area. And yeah. that's exactly what I think the hypothetical Ukulele 2 would, would be best served to do is to create these worlds that you don't make them bigger you just affect them in different ways that unlock new areas organically almost like a metroidvania kind of way yeah makes sense trav speaking of metroidvanias are they collectathons i was actually about (laughs) to propose the same question just like okay Where's the wh- where's the line between Metroidvanias and collectathons? Obviously, I think a Metroid game itself would not fall under that unless mm-hmm. we're counting missile tanks and etc. Because the individual items you collect, the upgrades, I wouldn't say that's the same. That's basically just picking up keys in a Zelda map, basically. Yeah. Except your keys yeah. are your weapons. Which we right. which we established Zelda is a collectathon, so yeah. it would, oh true, okay, yeah, it would okay. would work. Yeah, that's right. I, I that's also right. I also would consider that kind of close to like how Mega Man you get like the weapons whenever you kill a boss. It's kind of you know, a little bit. Little yeah. bit. Yes, Mega and Man no. I would not say is a collectathon. It's no, not. Mega Man but... definitely isn't. Metroidvanias are the closest thing I think to a collectathon that is not a collectathon. There's there. I mean, yeah, Animal I Well that. is a good example yeah. of a platforming focused uh, collectathon that's more recent that has. I'm sorry, platforming focused Metroidvania that feels yeah. almost collectathony in its own right because they have power stars in the form of the eggs you find, and yeah. you need mm-hmm. a, you don't need a certain number of them to beat the game, but they help. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm enjoying and, it so far. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I have some issues with it, but uh, it's a really, really great game for a one person game, which is not to put the game down. It's just incredible what they did with one person over, you know, ten years or whatever it was. But, oh wow. Yeah, I mean, it was. I'm pretty sure in production for a long time. Yeah, Trav, what so are so? Yeah, I, I realize I haven't been talking too much this podcast. Um, I, I appreciate the ukulele going off the rails. I just didn't have anything to say. Um, well, off the but I, I did want to you know? propose an idea. Unless Kevin, you there was a specific direction you wanted to take. No, this. I was going to throw it to you. Okay, cool. Um, 
I, I was, I'm trying to think like, all right, joking aside, like what, what, how would we categorize a, um, collectathon? And I'm thinking that the more or less, you know, joking aside of like Zelda is a collectathon. Um, I think that maybe, uh, a standard, I guess that we could hold it to is your progress always looming over your head with how many of what you have. Um, that might not make much sense. Um, I'm thinking of like, you know, you load into a save file in Donkey Kong Country and it shows mm. you like oh, how yeah, many yeah. of the, the gold statues and whatever you found. Yeah. You're... It's like 48% uh, done and you, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah where it uh, like 16... gives you a percentage. And yeah. I, I understand mm -hmm. by that metric, you could argue Metroid, Metroidvanias. Um, but you yeah, know, in the I'm case of like, think, like what Donkey Kong the... 64, hold on, Justin, I hate Sorry. you. That's um, true. But, but in like Donkey Kong 64, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, I want to say there's at least a way to regularly check how many of each bananas and whatever, uh, yeah, you in have each level, right? Left, yeah, yeah, like that kind of progress. Uh, Spyro, uh, might be a better example. Where yeah. like you you pause the game. I don't I don't know about the reignited trilogy. I haven't played it. I've it only does. Played the yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah, but like you that. pause it and it shows you what's left in this level. Yeah. Um. So I think that might be. Like that's just sort of been my, my my thought process going on in my head while you guys were talking okay. about ukulele. I'm just like, yeah. Well, what what is? Yeah. Like what I, what separates this from just like a 3D platformer and I, it's mm -hmm. yeah cuz like I, I think it got you, muddied you, over time is a lot of it. Like every yeah. game had to have collectathon elements at a point in time which uh we were saying before the podcast started uh cuz we stream these live on Twitch at twitchtv crub underscore official with uh, exclusive pre and post shows that um, we hang out with chat and have conversations about these topics afterwards with you guys. And we were talking about You how, won't be seeing that on the YouTube show. You are damn right. We talked about how Jack Whoa. 1 was to, to me, it's one of like the it's the prototypical collectathon. It's a stellar game, but it came mm -hmm. out three weeks after um, GTA three. So the entire gaming mm -hmm. landscape had changed. Yeah. And, and so reviews reflected that because, oh, this game is good, but we just saw something that just changed everything. So it just feels like Naughty Dog finally caught up to collectathons after making, you know, uh, 3D Donkey Kong Country for five years. Mm -hmm. And they so also... It's kind of also like how um, Horizon Zero Dawn kind of got the short end of the stick when that came out, because it literally with came out Zelda. Also with a Zelda Breath of the Wild, yeah. also collectathon, yeah. um, and, and it just was, was like it was just like man, Horizon's a good game, but we just saw something change the landscape of this genre. So yeah. mm. what's wild is what I think Horizon, I think Horizon's like done sales wise about the same as Breath of the Wild, which is insane. Yeah. Uh, I would say that yeah. game has a wild casual audience. Is that it's insane. Including the uh, I think PC it sold like ten million on PC alone. Uh, yeah, oh, the, it, just it did, PC. It definitely oh. bumped up on PC. Yeah, I, I, I think, think it, like I think... PC for Sony games has been doing so well that they like. I think that they said in a report that they're considering no longer doing timed exclusives for console. Like oh. yeah, sales for PC have been that good because Ghost just broke all the records at the time of recording. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And oh, I'll look their PC that. port team is very good. I give them credit. Um, Dude, like God of War was insanely optimized for PC. That was before. I don't this know team, how they did it. I think that was before this team even came in and started handling all the ports. Really? Because the team that's doing them now, uh, Nixes is their name. They hmm. they did Spider Man, both Spider Man. They did Ratchet, and they've done Horizon. Not Horizon. Um, they're probably doing Forbidden West whenever that comes over. But uh, they did Ghost. They did everything except for Last of Us and I think Sackboy because I think those were in house. And Sackboy was fine yeah. on launch. Last of Us was a travesty well, at launch. Sackboy didn't have crossplay, so yeah. so that game was a travesty too because it's a co-op game. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, like, oh, it's yeah. a Mario 3D World type uh, collectathon. Collectathon. Yeah. yeah. Question: Mar what, what, was that, what was that tech demo game that launched with the uh, PS5? Astros. Astro. Astro. Yeah, yeah. That, that's actually a collectathon kind that of. Actually yeah. That actually is a collectathon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But but but, Great but game. Is, Mario, is Mario Party a collectathon? No. Is your collect no. no. Astro's Astro's uh, Astrobot Rescue Mission on PSVR is a really really good collectathon. Also, I'll shout that out. That game mm. to me is the closest any game has come to feeling like a Mario Galaxy, but having platforming. So I guess Mario Galaxy Two. Because one is one is really light on platforming because it was you know such an mm. early game for the system. 
So we had oh. we had a, we had a very long argument with a friend of the show about he kept saying the Mario oh God. Galaxy was an action game, and we were just like, no, it's it's a platformer. I, I what? I don't no, I don't no, I don't disagree no. that it doesn't have a ton of like traditional platforming challenges, but not to call mm-hmm. it not a platformer is always funny. It's, yeah, that was the whole that, thing. That's a- we're not going to shadow box uh, unrelated friends on the podcast because if we would, exactly, uh, I, I would ask Nico what his thoughts on platformers are. If I was related yeah. to him, though, I'd kill him. God, <laughs> I'd watch. Question, is Spider Man PS4 yes. plat- uh, collectathon? No, Ga- games no. that have collectible things are not well, collectathons. Yes, yeah. Justin, think of this: Do you need to collect anything in that game to progress? Yes. No. Like what? Um, Killing people. Bodies. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? What do you, what do you mean no, by that? Right. Yeah, well, yeah, my mount, my mountain, cr- my mountain continues to grow. Spider-Man Which, will kill again. He oh, will okay. do it again. I didn't know what kind of bodies you meant, but okay. And for the record, we know, for anyone that's listening, that there is a... a uh, there are at least multiple formal definitions of what a collectathon is. We didn't yeah, look yes. them up because we chose this no. topic... Before mm-hmm. the podcast, like live, essentially, like we just we're just talking, we're just having a good time. Yeah, yeah. my my thought experiment for this entire podcast has been what denotes a collectathon, and does it have to be a platformer? And I'm trying to rack my brain of collectathons that aren't platformers, and I can't think of any. Oh, which is why I keep bringing up random games because most of the <laughs> only collectathon non-platformer you could have would be like a puzzle game. Because puzzle game could work because you're doing micro challenges. To obtain mm-hmm. these individual rewards, and puzzle games are pretty much the only things that you can guarantee don't need some form of platforming anyway. Mm-hmm. On on paper, you know, like if there were a if there were a okay. snake game, mm-hmm. Metroidvania collectathon, that would not be a platformer because you're just playing snake, you're just moving. Mm-hmm. So you're not trying to do any platforming challenge. I like yeah. the idea of centipede being a collectathon. Ooh. You're Pac-Man collecting, yeah. is a collectathon, yeah. Co- yeah it gosh. could be. Pac-Man World did a, was a collectathon, so there was a traditional That's collectathon. That's true. That's made. true, actually. That's yeah. True. And yeah. then, and then they also Although, have Pac-Man, which even, is a collectathon. Even then, a lot of Pac-Man World is more based on like there's collection in the background, but it's more of just like a 3D it's just a regular right? platformer mostly. Like, yeah. There, I think yeah. there are some gates yeah. that you like. You need certain amounts of things to progress, so it is a collectathon in that regard. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I think most of the time, just by getting stuff along the way, you would already have beaten the game. And then they made the, the Wii U Pac-Man game that nobody played. Ghostly Adventures, the beat-em-up game. Ghostly yeah. Adventures, yeah. Based on the show. So, Gosh. Ooh, hold on, actually, building, building off of that, I'm, I'm interrupting you, Sean. That's fine. Um, building else. off of that, um, with that idea of, like, you're just collecting things as a side objective, I'm not going to argue that Mario Sunshine is not a collectathon. No, I But that game does have a more mission structure to it rather than yeah. it's Mario 64. That's also kind Odyssey. of what I think about Galaxy. It, like if you're being yeah. frank. Like yeah. but with Galaxy yeah. there are at least, you know, there, there's at least a wider open amount of uh not sequence breaking, but we'll call it sequence breaking for the purposes of this sure. conversation. Uh mm-hmm. but no, you're right. Sunshine is kind of an A to B platformer where yeah. there aren't many things along the way that you can do because that that game's world design gates you a lot more than 64 where in 64 you can get the red coins at any level more in most yeah. worlds you know at any point you can get yeah the red it's coins. like there's the occasional level like the king womp or big womp i'm forgetting his name uh um, womp, the, yeah yeah womp's uh, yeah, castle, where womp's tower the boss only appears on that first stage so you need to big get one. to the second one for certain objectives yeah. to show up but then yeah. once you get that second mission then you could do anything after that of, has that yeah 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 um you know i i think an argument could be made that mario sunshine is not a collectathon it i, I think mm-hmm. it gates you that you need 70 stars to beat the game right yeah, you need yeah, you still no, need no, you, not um, for Sunshine. No, you need specifically Sunshine, beat all the Shadow Mario fights. Yeah, you have to beat level okay. seven in each world okay. to beat the game. Okay, then then yeah, no, I agree. Oh, I thought you. I think I you still think it is a collectathon for the record, but I think an argument could I, be made. It has optional no, okay. collection. I think is. I mean, um, the, yeah. theoretically, or you're because you're you need to get bodies. to level whatever. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, you are collecting bodies. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid Five. You collect people. You need a certain Good amount of them. shines to get to those levels to beat Shadow Mario. So theoretically, yeah. there's a collection level, but that's kind of the, the last level levels. pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like those are just those are just objective based platformer missions. Yeah, it's it's just like you've completed X amount of missions. Yeah. At this point. And I don't think Metal right. Gear is a collectathon, you know. I mean it could be. I think Hold Metal Gear Solid Four, you collect, you know, Fox die. Trauma. Oh. Trauma, yeah. Yeah. And you die. Nano Do machines? You, is is Silent Hill a collectathon? Yeah. Collect clues. I don't know I enough think... about Silent Hill, but I want to make a joke about it. Uh, oh man. Uh, Shadow gosh. the Hedgehog? Quick, what Shit. Silent Hill game should I play? Uh, the first seven. Bobby, why does All everyone want me to be oh, quiet? Seven. Actually, here, here's actually a, an interesting one that I just thought of. What about uh, Bomberman 64? Based, uh, Which one? I didn't there, play there Bomberman 64. There are two. I played Bomberman Hero. I'm assuming you mean the adventure game. Yeah. I the think there are one. two that are both adventure games, right? Well, there's oh, the first correct. one, and I, I think there's like Super Bomberman Attacks. Some, some, no, yeah, it's, it's Bomberman 64 and then Bomberman Hero. That's those it. were the yes. two sixty four games. I had Bomberman Hero. I Bomber had uh, I had Bomberman sixty four. So I think that one's if Mario also... Sunshine is a collectathon, then I think Monkey Ball is a collectathon. How? What are you collecting? Bananas? No, no it's that's... only only if only if Mario Sunshine counts as well. Oh, you know what? I but... see what you're saying because yeah, because it's it's mission based, and you don't even need to do the missions in order. You can skip some. Yeah. So that's just kind of a that's just kind of a platformer. Yeah. A non jumping no, think... platformer. I think Trav is trying to debunk all collectathons to make his point valid. Yeah. Monkey Ball, saying that there isn't one. Metroidvania. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Ooh. That would actually that. be kind of fire. Ooh. Yeah, I, Open I vibe world with that. Monkey That's Ball just game. playing Metroid Prime, but never coming out of Morphal. <laughs> is Metroid Prime <laughs> a collectathon? Can I do that? Right. Prime right. is the yeah. closest Metroid. that any Metroid comes to being a collectathon. Actually, actually yeah. I would argue Prime Two specifically with the yeah. keys. Well, because you need the keys in Prime One still. Yeah, yeah, and, but the and, keys in Prime Two, like every dungeon has its own keys you have to go collect. That's almost more Zelda. That's yeah. true. I think, and so, as we know from yeah. Justin, Zelda is a collectathon. I, I fair. It's a collectathon. If we're, if we're going by that stupid definition, then yeah. I'm gonna scream my <laughs> face off. I think I think one personally, I, I think is the closest it comes because you can get them along the way to doing other stuff, and you can get them organically, which is more yeah. in the spirit of a traditional collectathon. I think I think you are yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, I. I just want you to know that, like, I came into this podcast. I'm like, okay, we're gonna talk about something I'm really into. I'm so excited. We've just and then, like, him down. Within, within the thir- first thirty seconds, my brain was like, I don't know what the piss is happening. <laughs> I always I don't know a what's going on. Podcast. And my mind and, was gone, and it always turns out this way. <laughs> it was, Wait, what did you say? I said I always throw it to you at the start of a podcast, and every time I do that, it turns out this way. It's it's always incredible. Yeah. yeah, like I was like, I have all these ideas that I want to bring up. Blah blah blah. They're all gone. I can't think of a single thing. I, I, everything's gone. Everything um, hurts. I'll jump you to a cons- question that... Seven. What? I'll well, jump you to a question seven. that I'm going to answer at some point in a video one day that I want to make. Okay. Okay. Can you beat Mario 64 without doing speedrun strats? I say no. Yeah. No. It's Cause impossible. Because it, if you jump, you're doing a half A press on the way down. Ooh. It's true. Have you ever heard of the um, the half A presses in Mario sixty four? A- what do you think he was referencing? Have you ever heard of that? I'm talking to I- the, the other two because I know. Oh, Ke- yeah. So I showed Kevin this I love, video. I, I genuinely love that for, video. For the record, I, show- I had this idea for for like over two years now. I just haven't done it. Uh, I even I have footage that at some point I should put on Grub where I was playing Mario sixty four as intentionally poorly as possible because the idea was can you beat mario 64 just by playing the game normally <laughs> and, and, it'd be, and it'd be styled yeah. after all those those can you beat speed run challenge type things and yeah so i had mario drown at the start of uh what's the first water level i forget the name dire dire docks oh uh, oh i thought no, you meant no, no. like Jolly in the, Bay. outside the castle no i had him, i had him drown no. in water that's too shallow to drown in Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, that would be wouldn't that be Jolly, Jolly Roger, Roger Bay? Bay? Yeah, yeah. See, yeah no, Jolly, Jolly Roger. Roger. I'm sorry, not Dire Dire Docks. I'm up, yeah, I'm upset. I'm upset you brought that up, and I immediately thought of Peter Griffin just like putting his face in soup and drowning in it. And I just imagine it was Mario function- making this. You always me, go to Family it took Guy. Me, it's, fair. it's the same thing. Is Family it's same, Guy it's a character trait? Is Family Guy? It's Family a Guy. Collect-a-thon. No American Dad. Which is one? Though. You're collecting what? funny moments. There are funny moments. Wait a minute. Yeah, hold on. Exactly. Hold up. Hold exactly. up. Wait a minute. He's spitting. He's spitting. I mean, he's American cooking. Dad I don't think has he's a... spitting. I think he's vomiting. But yeah, <laughs> <Just keep going. laughs> that's not American spit. That's Dad. Bile. 
American Dad has a speed running community. That's all I'm saying. That's true. I know it's true. It's but to go, to go back to the But the not story. all speed runnable games are collectathons. That's true. I know Futurama, to Futurama has a platform, or is that a collectathon? You do? Yeah. No, you don't need to collect things to beat that game. There are some mm-hmm. levels where you do, but they're all required for you to collect all the things. Uh, it does have collectathon elements, but it's also kind of a shooter in some levels. I love that Futurama <sighs> game in theory. Yeah, that's kind of what Not I in am. practice, that's but kinda... I love that game in theory. I love what it does, uh, if nothing else. Um, mm-hmm. to, to go back to the story and close that out. So I've had that idea for a long time, and I haven't figured yeah. out how to do it, because I'm also at some point going to do something with Mario 64 as like a proper, you know, my style of retrospective. And mm-hmm. so I haven't figured out how to do that and then also do the other one without them kind of, you know, butting heads. And... When Justin showed me the the half a press video and they started talking about parallel universes, I got upset, and then that's <laughs> when I had the idea of can you beat it without speed running? <laughs> so I, at some point I'm gonna do that like, when I just give up on life. Yeah, yeah. Genuinely, I think like, that video is really cool. There's this ramp with like 65 <laughs> different triangles that you can teleport yourself to by using a lot of speed. And normally somebody wouldn't be able to do that, but that didn't stop me. I mapped out eight specific triangles that I needed to get to to get up there without having to press the A button. And if Gosh. I do it all right, it looks like this. And then he just shot up to where the star was. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> you know that um, you know that trick where uh, no. you have a cosmic ray hit your 64 to flip a bit and you teleport yes. to the top of TikTok clock? Yeah, yes. I, I can't beat the game yeah. without doing that. Okay. No. I, okay. I have like That's a fair. I have like a sun clock of when I'm supposed to play Mario. That, that does remind me the end game of the original idea of can you beat it by playing the game normally was that my switch dies I think so then I couldn't beat the game and that's how the video ends like you, you just can't beat Mario 64 without <laughs> oh playing God. the game speed you, running. You, you know you know what should oh my gosh I just thought of actually a good bit for you to do. I don't know if I want to say it out loud though. Yeah, don't say it out loud. Don't give chat ideas. What I'm are you not doing? Giving, they're not going to do it. They're not You're gonna gonna giving help. away. I'm walking it. I, I'm going to piss in your shoe. I know you. You're you giving have. away ideas it's dripping that we wet could. Right now. Oh God. Oh, that's spit. You should have gotten some vessies. I know. Should have used Kevin make, code. Kevin does that code. <laughs> does it make it dry? Well, it no. does. It stops them from getting wet. I wonder if that code still works. Probably does. Call them. Uh, I've tried. Call them right now. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, we're we're good. Let, let's <laughs> jump forward over back to Justin. Tell yeah, us you. more about collectathons. <laughs> and don't say Zelda. So Zelda. Uh, s- no, no Zelda. I'd like to point no. out for our uh, audio listeners at home that Justin just laughed so hard that his entire like edit out my background thing just cut out his whole body. Yeah. <laughs> he phased out um, of existence. That was a half so- press. One of the reasons why I love <laughs> one of the reasons why I love Mario Odyssey so much uh-huh. is because they somehow made a way for the normal coins in the game to have as much like um impact on your on like you're excited to see them as the actual moons do. And I'm not mm-hmm. talking about the normal coins, I'm talking about the purple coins in each level. Where okay. when you're finding those, those are stepping you up to a new costume that you can put Mario in. And a lot mm. of those costumes are really cool references to a bunch of different other games. And some of the costumes you need to have a certain amount of moons to collect. Some of them unlock like, moons by themselves. Also. Yeah. yeah. Like you need to, like one moon, you need to be wearing the sombrero and the poncho yeah. for you to be able to get into the this club. And when you get into the club, you get a moon. Like, Mario crying in the club. Yeah, like he's crying in the Just club. Just like me. He's in the club and he's like, nobody knows that I'm the Super Mario. Nobody did. <laughs> um, But like... That way of trying to reinvent something that's a mainstay in the Mario universe. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had the blue coins, but they were only really just like, you get 10, you get a star. That's really about it. But they reinvented something so simple as coins and making it something that you actually want to go out and search for, not only Mm -hmm. for more moon's sake, but also just what cool costume does Mario get next? Like, what does he get from collecting all these coins? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to say that you can use the coins to buy stars so that Mario Odyssey is a game as a service. I thought you were going I mean, there because I forgot purple coins yeah. existed. I haven't thought about that yeah. game in like five years. Yeah. Until but, nah, like, going, you like go in and you get like the skeleton costume where you're just a skeleton yeah. walking yeah. around and things like that. Going back to the, uh, to the Metroidvania angle of it, because one thing we mm-hmm. haven't talked about is uh, completionism 
as far as games go in general, but especially with collectathons. We haven't had that. That was kind of yet. my question earlier. And I don't care. With like, and one with of the, the things that I love about uh, <laughs> like a game like the the Ratchet and Clank randomizer is that that kind of has a Metroidvania element because mm-hmm. you you collect you know your different power ups, your different weapons or gadgets or whatever, and by getting certain gadgets, you then can put the the Metroid pieces together of oh I can do that, and that's that's the game that clicked randomizers in my head finally for me because I realized oh mm-hmm. I see I see the vision. Where before I was like, I understand it. I just don't, they don't click well for me. Yeah. And once I had that Metroid, like, uh, you know, good brain feeling, uh, mm-hmm. it made me appreciate a lot of Ratchet 1 otherwise that I, I always liked. But, you know, as time goes on, you get jaded to certain things. And mm-hmm. so I had gotten jaded with like, not jaded, that's not the right word. But, you know, when I'm playing, I would avoid some gold bolts because I didn't want to do them or whatever. And now... Yeah by virtue of the randomizer i've gotten back into completing the game for the sake of it not that i've mm-hmm. played ratchet one in particular since 2021 but but hey right yeah be healthy do how do yeah justin what were you gonna say what i was saying like that was kind of what i was saying earlier oh, i like, don't care what, I, what? <laughs> okay i got him twice i, I, I got him twice. i knew that was it. i knew it was coming <laughs> uh, that was good Trav, you're supposed to talk. Uh, huh? What? What I, am I saying? I, I was throwing you, were... you the ball as far as randomizers, Metroidvanias, completionism, etc. Yeah, go. Oh. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> you stopped me for I, this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. Justin, go ahead. Good job. Say your shit. That's what I was saying earlier. I was like, that's that was why I asked the question, like, at what point as a game designer do you decide that you've collected enough to um be done with the game? Because, like... I'm, like someone like I, the more the older I've gotten with com- with uh, collectathons, the more I'm like, well, I'm playing this game to collect things, so I want to collect them all. But not everybody kind of thinks that way. A lot of people are just like, I just want to get what I need to get, move on to the next world, see what's coming up, see what's new. And at what point do you kind of let the players go out in the world and say, okay, I've collected enough. There might be more in the world that I can collect, but. I don't need to. I can. Get, I can move I on think to the next world. To some element, there's like the Celeste factor, where mm-hmm. you 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 only have to collect as much as you want to, given that game's more yeah. of a platformer than a collectathon. But there is yeah. that element of completion to it. I think that that's mm-hmm. a great example of it. Uh, I wish you could turn seeing. Maybe you can now, but I wish you could turn seeing the other strawberries off because I will always go for them, and then yeah, I, and then I'm like, I'm not playing this game anymore. It's too much. Um, yeah, because it. And the funny thing, too, is the strawberries aren't even the collectible you want to collect. It's yeah. the hearts that yeah, let you right. get the final level. Um, right. But I think broadly, to me, it's like, you know, 70% is probably where you would want to aim. But I think it's a case-by-case mm-hmm. case sort of thing where when when a focus tester is starting to feel like this game should be over soon, mm-hmm. that's when you want to end it. Because you yeah. don't want to overstay your welcome because then people aren't going to complete your game or come back for the sequel, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. You, you know, it's a game that just came to mind that, like, as we're talking about, you know, you know, you don't always have to 100% complete a game Halo to like, two. the ending and whatnot. Not that. Oh. Uh, actually, which, yeah. actually, fun fact, whenever I played Halo 2 for the first time and it abruptly ended, I actually thought my, like, my CD was broken. <laughs> uh, I kid you not, like, I was very upset. Shit, but, this fight. Uh, but anyway, uh, so a game that, like, just came to mind because, again, 100% completion, you don't have to do that to, you know, get a true ending, beat a game. Kirby 64 has the final boss behind 100% completion Mm -hmm. of getting every shard. And I immediately remembered how that game would have these like little areas where you need like, you know, two powers to like open a door, which is fine, but they would give you those doors when you couldn't get both powers in that level. So you'd have to backtrack, get those, come back, remember where you- And if you get hit- And make sure you don't get hit. Yeah. Yes. And like- Figurative game Which I find- Not literal. which I find kind of funny because it's like, okay, Kirby is like a really easy game to beat. But things like that, I think kind of, I, I guarantee you, there's so many people that have no idea you fight a biblically, biblically accurate, like, angel yeah, at the end of Kirby two. 64. Yeah. Like, I, I guarantee like... you, like, 70% people never did that. No, I feel, like, I feel like you're right that most didn't because that was also like a rental era game for one. But I feel mm-hmm. like if you know Kirby, yeah. you know that he fights God in every game by the end. 
Yeah. Like, that's it's always how those games end. That's been a recent ish yeah. revelation for people. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously fans kind of knew that, but, you know, mm-hmm. like that being a mainstream meme almost. Yeah. Is yeah. Pretty recent. Yeah. Who, like that. Who and, like, DDD did nothing wrong type stuff. Yeah. He, he, DDD. Because he, he's always wrong. trying to defend from a worse evil, is always the argument. Yeah. And yeah. Kirby's just an idiot that unleashes Satan, Satan. onto the world. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. And then, well, kill, and then he, kills Satan and then goes back and does yeah. his thing. Yeah. He's like, oh, I trusted Satan, but I guess that's bad. So I'll just go ahead and banish him to like purgatory. I mean, in the end, I think, you know, Kirby just killing God uh, that yeah. DDD is trying to stop is probably better option for global politic. Who tried to idea, kill who tried to kill God first, RPGs or Kirby? Kirby. RPGs mm, didn't exist until Kirby. RPGs, too. yeah, RPGs didn't exist until Final Fantasy. That's Well, I really really didn't I'm actually exist kind of curious until, about this though. They I, didn't I, exist I, until Persona 5. Persona 5 made them all. Pers- yeah, well, and also, you know, Shibuya didn't what exist. What was the first RPG either. that you kill God? I don't know. Uh, that could be I, a fun I, video essay, talking about, like, say, it, it, it like be, with actually, the yeah, thumbnail, thumbnails be, just in parentheses, kill God. It might be Shin Megami Tensei. It could be that. It could be a Dragon Warrior game. Maybe I Ultima? Know. I didn't play Dragon I think, Quest. I think most of Maybe the Dragon Ultima? Quest games are... Oh, yeah, Ultima would count. Uh, the Ultima is debatably a JRPG. If you yeah. go back to like the, the the definition of the JRPG crap, it's like it? on that line. Yeah, granted, I it, you know, Ultima was a computer RPG. It is. It, it but is. It, but like you... Ultima is one of those games that defined what Dragon Quest would become. So mm-hmm. it kind of inspired really? both uh, Western RPGs and uh, JRPGs. Yeah. Huh. In the same yeah. way, that, I did same, not know that to the same degree that D and D did more or less. Because I know that um, yeah. Ultima went on to. It was the same developers for one of them. Like, Ultima created System Shock, and so, like, the mm-hmm. modern Bioshock mm-hmm. immersive sim came yeah. from that. I yeah. didn't know... That's kind of where Fallout did you say also... Dragon Quest came from that? I, Dragon or... Quest, I believe, was... Uh, it direct. had, like, inspirations. Like, someone played oh. Dragon Quest in, uh, at, you know, Enix, and that's when... Yeah. That's where the idea started spawning, more or less. Yeah. That Weird. plus, you know, again, D&D and other inspirations that I'm, I'm forgetting about, but usually it all comes yeah. back to Ultima. Huh. Yeah, Ultima, yeah, Ultima is pretty much like one of the foundations for RPGs, uh, for better and worse. Interesting. I'm gonna. Have I mean, to funnily enough, one of the first like collectathons ever made. I, yeah, I was gonna say I like I like that <laughs> we've like, completely circle. we've completely gone away from RP, uh oh, gosh, is Mega Man Legends a collectathon? No. Okay. You don't collect anything in that game. <laughs> you collect trauma. Oh, true. Is it Tron is Dark Souls risk- 2 is my favorite collectathon. I'm gonna- is Tron Bond Wonderland a collectathon? No, it's actually a park manager. <laughs> Tron Bond Wonderland. Oh, what the hell is that game called? Ballad Tron- Misadventures Wonderland? of Tron Bond. Fake um, yeah. Misadventures yeah. of Tron Bond. I wasn't sure if you I've were going beaten- for Tron Bond or Balan Wonderworld. I really didn't know which one you meant. I forgot Balan Wonderworld. Is <laughs> that a collectathon? Both? I wanted to forget. Is that a collected thought? Is it just no. a pre- no one played it besides Chris? So I'm pretty sure it is. I saw Chris call. beat the game in real time, and I still don't know. Yeah, I, I was I. I watched Chris in real time, and I know. You know what do you know? Tell us. Yeah. So the- <laughs> I'm going to so jump ahead get- to uh, speaking of combining <sighs> things and killing God. I'm going to jump ahead to our subscriber question of the week once again. If you are a member of the Patreon at any tier, or you're a Twitch subscriber or YouTube channel member, you can ask us questions for the Patreon slash subscriber question of the week, and we will answer them live on air. So this one is from actually one of us, uh, Rack Rocks, who is a patron, oh. uh, asked if you could merge two game worlds together, which would they be and why? Okay. I have one. You go first, Sean. Banjo Kazooie and Skyrim. Why? Okay. I thought you were gonna say Left for Dead, and I was like, we we already did that. <laughs> no, that's boring. I I because I I just want like, I think it'd be just hilarious to walk around and you go talk to say all freaking you just hear because he's just <laughs> eating porridge the entire time. I'm gonna say yeah, just kind of like that. I'm gonna yeah. say the King of the Hill PC game. And mm-hmm. The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of, kind of underrated game. Would Bobby be not, not Last of Us immune to the? No, no. Hank is Joel. No, he started. Hank is Joel. Hank is Joel. Though Bobby as Ellie. Ellie would not be a bad Bobby idea is Ellie. if we were doing a retelling sort of situation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Actually. Yeah. But why does that? Why does that get already? Did you say what? 
<laughs> you sound like I, you sound like Bev Bighead there. But dead. I, I, just, I got dead. I got gosh. bit already. I haven't turned. Oh my gosh. Um. Back in my day, Bobby, we had that's Discord. Pretty, uh, that's pretty similar. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty similar to, to mine. I was gonna say Fallout and Kirby. That's just kind of Kirby, just, though. That's just Kirby. Like, yeah, like, I know. That's just okay. That's fair. Um, no, I don't know. A real answer. Let me. Let me. Just, I'm just gonna pick two random games from my Steam library. I'm All right, gonna here pick. We go. Okay. Phantom Pain crossed over with Call of Duty. No, that's, that's the same thing. Come on, I was Chicken say, Invaders. I, I want Chicken Invaders with Phantom Pain. I I would love to combine. Mm -hmm. Ultra Kill and Left 4 Dead. Oh, Ooh. you know the correct answer. You want to parry the zombies? You know the yes. cor the correct answer, and you're all gonna love this. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. I know it's coming. Super Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was gonna say PlayStation All Stars, but now I'm thinking Multiverses. <laughs> Multiverses. But, so but I, was also gonna gonna say, I was also gonna confirmed. say Fortnite because then you can have everybody in Smash Brothers. Oh, I can't wait to beat up John Wick. I like Fortnite. the idea of having two Ryu's. Yeah. yeah oh, Goku second... could probably be in Smash. Look, if you're good, you can have second Ryu. Gosh. You can have a second Ryu as a tree. Yeah. Yay! As a, as a tree. But then Gosh. again, like, I like the idea of being able to, like, cross up Mario as LeBron, because you can't do that in NBA Street. He's not in you that game. You can! No. Is he, is in he V3. In that one? LeBron's in that game. Is yeah. He okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's in V3. I wasn't sure if yeah, that was before or... You can cross year. up Mario as LeBron James. All right, yeah. bet. Bet. Gosh. I know what I'm doing after this. You can hit him with the <laughs> Luigiana. <laughs> the Luigiana the purchase. Luigiana purchase? <laughs> yeah. Same, same wavelength. <laughs> Wait, uh, did you say the same yeah, thing? No, you can, yeah, you can, did you not pay attention to me? You no, name, I don't know you. I'm going to scream your mouth. <laughs> moves in NBA Street Volume mm -hmm. 3. And so for the charity squirt. room a couple years ago, when we did the, oh. the subpar Smash Brothers event, I believe it was, I mm -hmm. played NBA Street uh, <laughs> as Mario and Luigi and, you know, that whole team and just made a bunch of moves, mostly called Luigiana or uh, what were some of the other ones? Um, oh, that's right. That was the it. hot. It was like the hot Luigi. The hot. Um, oh, that's hot. I don't, I don't um, think that was one. Uh, George Waluigi Bush. That was one. George Waluigi <laughs> Bush was one yeah. of them. Why is that a thing? Um, oh, right. there's. I, I have a second. I, one. I drink squirt. Was not that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I forgot about I drink was, squirt. Was that real? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. weird. That's real. I remember no. that. No. Uh, no oh, man. There was one okay, where so I shot. There was one. Uh, this is the last thing I'll say about it. There was one where I shot a half court shot, which was specifically the F Chris, and I nailed it. I sunk that shit. It was. It was titled the F Chris, and it was just like it would. He would be doing random skill moves, and then that would just pop up on the screen because <laughs> it had no. It had no filter. I'll, I'll say one more. There was I Swaluigi. Uh, you know, <laughs> Swaluigi. Man, these are. Thank you, Rack Rocks, for the question of the week. Uh, that was a good question, actually. Let's never answer it again. Yeah. Who are you? I, I think, mean, we've uh, already okay, answered right. it. So. Real oh. answer. Real answer. Okay. Oh, right, Papers, right. please. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. The Sims. Um, um, uh, Halo. Papers, please. Oh, are we deporting a bunch of companies? <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.